Welcome to Abundant Feminine, a podcast for my fellow girls where we talk about entrepreneurship, manifesting, and just keep things real as fuck. I'm your host, Krista Chambers, and I'm so stoked to be coming here for a solo episode today as we wrap up season one of Abundant Feminine with episode 10. I'm so grateful that we made it this far and that I had such amazing, positive guests who I learned so much from and I hope you guys learned from too. There has been so many inspiring women who have graced episodes here and I just truly appreciate every one of them for taking the time out to come talk with me and just share their stories. As for season two, I don't have an exact date of when she's going to come back, but I do feel confident that I want to continue this. So I will be posting about it if you want to follow at Abundant Feminine on Instagram. I'll definitely be sharing updates leading up to that. But today I'm excited to just share some updates since that first episode where I talked by myself. So from that point, I actually started a new business, which a lot of you guys might know about. It's called Grow Babe. And it's a little plant business for really easy care plants to help empower other girls that they can do anything. Like, I always felt like I killed everything and I had a black thumb growing up until I had one girlfriend who was so intrigued by plants and who loves them so much. She actually made me kind of interested because she'd talk about it with such passion. Shout out to Oriana. <laughs> And so I started getting a couple plants here and there and realizing it's not as hard as I thought. So yeah, I just wanted to start this to help other girls who feel like they can't grow anything realize they can. And it's actually a super fun and therapeutic hobby and so nice to enjoy the beauty of these plants. With that, I also pair every plant with a crystal because you guys know I love crystals. And I love their little powers and their little encouragement to me as well. So I thought that that would be fun. Before I actually started Grow Babe, I would see those little booths at like farmer's market kind of vibe, like flea markets. I thought that that was so cute and I always wanted to do something like that. I just found one that I thought was cute, which was the Aloha Home Market and I emailed them and... It was a pretty simple process and I actually highly recommend to any of you guys if you have little businesses and you want to meet people face to face and sell your products in person because the market has a pretty good turnout and it's like a nice vibe. I am just glad that I could be a part of it. I'm super stoked. I hope that I can do other markets as well for Grow Babe so stay tuned for that but I'm just so happy that that business came to be and I truly feel like that was something that I was guided to do for a long time before. So before I moved into this house that I'm in now where I have my office and it's a two bedroom place so I have a lot more space, I was living in a studio and I loved the studio so much. I truly feel like I found myself there and I definitely found my independence there. It was my first move that was completely on my own and that I got to decorate from start to finish. I didn't have any furniture or anything, so I truly got to like put my touch on every single thing. And it just really taught me to be happy by myself. I truly do feel like I moved there to kind of find myself and be my own person I guess but that shit was kicked into high gear like six months into living there because that's when the pandemic happened and everything was so strict you couldn't like go anywhere or really like see anyone and I lived by myself so I was like super by myself and in the beginning of that I was kind of like having a negative mindset about it I guess just thinking that like oh this sucks I like can't do anything I'm like all alone but then I realized well yes this it sucks because you keep saying that so I was like okay changing my mindset and I remember like there's like a specific day where that like changed and I was like writing it in my journal like I love the um quarantine and I love getting to do things that I enjoy 
I like bought puzzles and stuff. And I really just treasured that time. And I'd go on so many walks around my neighborhood and that's actually when I started meditating. And the reason was because I always heard about meditating in all the books and stuff that I read, but I just never got around to it. I was at this place where literally anything that I was enjoying, I would just like milk the crap out of it and like do it for as long as possible. So for that, I'd sit there in stillness and be grateful and picture all the things that I wanted in my life and that I was thankful for that I have in my life. And it was like a perfect intro for me to meditating because I kind of did it much longer than I probably would have if it wasn't for that because I just was like, if I'm having a good time doing this, I'm going to make it last as long as possible because there's nothing else to do. But I kind of got way off track from Grow Babe. Basically, when I lived in the studio, I started having this idea through meditation, so I guess that kind of links, to do plants and crystals and to empower girls that way. And I just couldn't do it because there wasn't enough space. That was another big thing about moving here that I was excited about to just have more space. And so I started buying all the pots and stuff, like this plant here, if you guys are watching on YouTube. It's like, it just pops out and it's so fun and easy to take care of because you literally just dunk this in water like once a week and then she grows and she's happy. And I just like want that for everybody who buys Grow Babe for it to just be so effortless. I mean, the effort is sticking that thing in a bowl of water once a week and letting it dry. But so minimal, I feel like. And even I would always feel so intimidated with soil plants I do have some now and I love them and I kind of got over my fear but when I'd be like I don't know when to water it and people would be like well just feel it like just look is it wet I'm like what do you mean how do I know and so I just think that that's easier to just be like she's on a schedule and you just do this one thing every time and it'll be good like the sun has new leaves growing and everything I'm so happy that I was able to execute that thing that I was like getting on my heart to do I'm really happy about that and other updates speaking of meditating when I had Rachel on Ray Lux that was a few episodes back I'm sure you guys can find it she talked about how she meditates daily and that was totally one of those things that I'd be like, oh yeah, that's cool. I'm sure that's good for you. But like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I don't have the time. I don't have the discipline. Like, it's just not happening, you know. But as the universe would have it, she's like, oh yes, yeah, sis, but you are. So basically, how that kind of went down was I feel like Rachel planted the seed of like me knowing yeah that's honestly such a good idea but I was still resisting it and then I feel like I was just kind of not getting as many bookings as I would have liked and also kind of feeling a little bit stagnant in what I was doing with the photography um I love photography and I really grew up with it like that business grew with me since I was 15 years old if you guys listen to the first episode but it's been a long time and I just not that I don't love it anymore I do but I just was kind of feeling like I wanted a change of scenery a little bit and I wanted to do something else that would make me feel more lit up and inspired but I just didn't know where to start. Grow Babe was a great thing for it but it just wasn't exactly it you know what I mean so I was just kind of feeling really down and full of self-doubt like holy shit if I like keep not making this amount of bookings then I'm like can I even pay for rent can I even pay for all of my bills and everything and all of those fears and stuff they were definitely real but I feel like I didn't necessarily have to be getting so bummed about it as I was because I do have savings. I know that I could make it for some months without getting any bookings, but you know, it's just scary, especially as an entrepreneur, which I know a lot of you guys are. 
it's like what if I have to go back to work what if I like lose everything and it's like there's so many steps that would happen before you like get to that point and I mean shoots even if it got to that point where I did have to go back and get like a job working for somebody else I know that if the universe which I feel like loves me and takes care of me so much got me to that point then there's definitely a reason for that and I'd find something that I'd enjoy in that and everything would be okay it's just that self-doubt she's such a bitch but (laughs) I just wanted to share and kind of be vulnerable in that sense a little bit because I think it might be relatable and it's just like we don't need to feel that I feel like I even knew that in the moment it's just so hard to pull yourself out of it hence why the meditating happened so with that I felt like I'd pull guidance cards and I kept getting these like cards about communication and in my heart I felt like I just knew that it meant that the universe and my angels and my guides were telling me like sis you want us to like change things for you and bring you money and bring you all of this goodness yet you're just like asking asking but you're not like talking to us or making like a relationship with us so why should we give you anything you know or why should we make you feel better all of a sudden so it's like okay you know what I truly feel like I've been getting guided a lot in my own internal dialogue and intuition and everything to meditate daily and so I'm like okay, I'm going to commit. I can't be asking for all of this stuff and not put in the work. So I was like, all right, I'm going to commit to meditating every day for 30 days. And I wanted that to last longer. I just wasn't, I didn't want to be like, I'm going to meditate every day forever. And then that's such an overwhelming task. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, no, like, you know, when you just take on too much, you don't finish it. So that was the plan, and today it's day 69 of meditating, so I got through my 30 days, and literally, it's been the most life-changing thing ever, and I just want to share how. So how I usually meditate is I like to do it first thing in the morning for most days, especially on work days, because I feel like If I don't, then I just get busy doing other things and working and then it's like trying to fit it in later in the day is harder, especially when my boyfriend comes home. Not that he's like against me meditating, but it's like, it's just more distracting, you know? First thing in the morning for me is like the perfect time and it's just like makes me feel lighter and more optimistic about the day. So... I will pull guidance cards. This isn't necessary and nobody needs to do it how I do. It's just, I just want to share in case you want some inspiration possibly and feel free to take whatever you like from it and be like, nah, to whatever you don't. But I like to pull guidance cards and I have two different decks. Like one is the Moonology deck. I got that at that crystal shop called Gaia in university. And then I also have an Inquire Within deck, and I got that one from Modern Healing Shop. Um, it's at modernhealing.shop on Instagram, and I love her. She's actually a client, and she gifted me those, and I'm so thankful because I totally use them every day. So I like to pull my guidance cards. My personal method is like shuffling them and then having it whatever cards fly out are the ones. So I usually ask for three and try to get the three and then line up the other deck three. So it kind of clarifies the message like when they're um, in lines. I got the shuffling method from Cowie at Cowie Goodness. She was on episode two, if you guys want to listen. And then from that point, I get my crystals. I usually just pick what calls to me, but I usually always get amethyst and tiger's eye because I just feel so connected to those and I love them. So I always like to have those to help me connect. Amethyst is really good for intuition and trusting your intuition, which I definitely needed and I appreciate so much now. And then tiger's eye was one that was recommended to me by Cindy at Ginger13 when I was kind of going through transitioning and going on my own, she said it would help with kind of like success and self-empowerment and all those things. 
And then the rest, I kind of switch up whatever I'm feeling called to. I take those crystals and then I sit cross-legged and I just hold them and I put on whatever meditation music. I've been liking to go on YouTube and then search up like something in the realm of what I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed or doubtful, I'll put on like a self-empowerment sound healing and listen to that as I meditate. Or if I'm feeling like good and I just want to like attract more money, I'll put in put on like a wealth and abundance attracting sound healing. And then I'll just sit with that and I'll try to take deep breaths and focus on my breathing and clear my thoughts. Although I know that that's hard and I know that that's why a lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I can't meditate. I can't like clear my thoughts. But I feel like clearing your thoughts isn't the most important part to me. And I know some people might disagree, but that's just my personal thoughts on it. I feel like we can still get lots of guidance and goodness and healing from it, even if our mind isn't completely clear. So I'll try to clear my thoughts, but that typically doesn't last too long for me. And so I'll try to just focus my thoughts on things I'm grateful for instead, or feelings that I like. Like, for example, one of my most relaxed states is like floating on in the ocean on my back with like the sun hitting me. So I'll try to like picture that feeling and whatever. And I'll try to just do that until I feel like I'm done. And sometimes that's like 30 minutes and sometimes that's like maybe 10 minutes. I definitely don't set like a certain time that I need to finish by or like set an alarm or anything. I just kind of go by how I'm feeling. And you'll know when you're done. And <laughs> um, one thing that's pretty cool, though, is I've had the experience where this is kind of early on in my starting this practice, too, where I had to finish or I really wanted to finish at a certain time because I had other things that I needed to get to. Um, I don't remember the exact time, but let's say like 8.30, I was like, I'd hope to be finished. Or actually, I think it might have been 9. Nine, I want to finish meditating, and I just said that, and, like, I want to be done writing and everything, and so right when I finished, like, everything, I, like, looked at my phone screen, and it was, like, nine on the dot, and I was, like, oh, my gosh, so cool. Thank you, universe. Like, I just love that kind of stuff. Anywho, when I'm finished with the actual sitting there meditating practice, I will get my journal, and I'll free write, and this is based off of the teachings of Gabrielle Bernstein from the book Super Attractor, which I love and highly recommend. And if you guys want to download the audiobook, I can like send you the free version um, if you've never like accepted a book from a friend on Audible. So message me on Abundant Feminine and I can send you that. But I loved that book so much and it really like was life changing. And one of my favorite parts about it was the free writing part. And so I started my journal, and I just say, thank you, God and guides of the highest truth and compassion. She says that that's an important distinction because she's like, you don't want to invite guides that don't have your best interest in mind or that aren't of light and goodness. So I say that. And I say, thank you for the guidance that you have for me today through this free writing. And then later on, I actually started adding, and thank you for all the guidance that you have for me throughout the day as well in whatever way you see fit, I trust you. And that's been really cool too, to like see different things, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But then I'll write, and usually I start it by like writing a couple of things I'm grateful for, or even like asking a question about something specific. Like for example, in that beginning phase, I was like, I'm so scared and full of self-doubt. Can you please give me guidance on this? And then I just start writing basically like whatever random thoughts come to my brain. And I feel like that's my kind of way of channeling my guidance. It'll just be in different voices every day, giving me advice through the writing. So like it'll be speaking to me like some days it'll be like, dear one, you have nothing to worry about. Everything you want, you're going to have. And if you could be in the position where you have everything you want, you have all of the abundance, you have 
the home of your dreams. You have all of these things. You're going to be like, I don't even know why I was tripping. And that was totally worth the wait. And I, I totally understand why everything had to happen in that order for me to get to this point. So basically, like, chill and just let that unfold. And that was, like, guidance that I kind of got a lot. And it just, like, really made me feel better. And it was kind of cool to see that, like, as the days went on, there was definitely, like, a pattern in the cards I get. I, like, I think my deck has, like, two or three hundred cards in it, yet I'd still get, um, that actually might be wrong. I don't know. She, she has a fat stack of cards, yet I'd still get, like, recurring cards all the time or even like my girlfriend would come over and she'd pull cards to me from her deck and it'd be like the exact same message lined up as what I had gotten that morning except just like in different words because it was a different deck and yeah free writing is so cool basically as Gabrielle Bernstein says it's like you just write and don't like question anything and don't think that it's like nonsense just write it anyway you might understand it at a later point what it's trying to tell you and I just feel like it's, I get such clear guidance, like that where it encourages me along with specific things about my business, like if I'm gonna like launch a giveaway or something, it'll tell me, okay, this is the time to do it, like, or you should wait. So I just think that that's such a cool tool that I've been blessed to be able to use. And I hope that some of you guys might be able to use it too and just kind of get clarity and guidance. Like, it's so nice. And I feel like when it's through that kind of channeling or like deep intuition, it just makes me feel more safe and confident about moving forward with whatever it's telling me to do because I'm like, man, that's some divine shit right there. So I better just listen and do it. Whereas when I'm just trying to think of these things and like do it off of my own kind of thoughts and logic, I will second guess myself more. I'll be like, wait, but should I? Like, I don't know. And I feel like decision making is a hard thing for a lot of people. And it was for me included until I kind of started tuning into my intuition. To me, intuition is super helpful with not having to make decisions by yourself because you can ask and you can get answers on what to do without having to like stress so much and like think about it so logically and then like not know if you're making the right decision like your intuition will make you feel in your heart what's right and what's not so I just feel like that's such a gift and a huge reason why I love amethyst so much like look at this guy <laughs> If you guys aren't listening on YouTube, I'm pointing to my huge, like, amethyst pillar on my desk. But, so as this process kind of moved on, I felt like I was putting all of my energy into Grow Babe for a little bit because that's, like, what piqued my interest. And I kind of had, like, this guilt of, like, is it bad that I'm, like, putting so much energy into this and not as much into, like, my Chris Taylor side of business? And I feel like my guidance was telling me, no, it's okay because there's going to be a time for that. Like, everything is working out how it needs to. And, boy, was it right. So, I have kind of, like, switched my focus on my career path to something totally different since starting this practice, and I'm so excited about it. The thing that I'm doing now is web design, and I literally love it so much, and it's been, like, bringing me so much passion and light and all of that, and I truly feel like... It all stemmed from the meditating and the universe being like, okay, you're listening, you're doing this practice to like get yourself to feel better, to feel more in alignment, to be open to receive, and just opening your heart to new possibilities and what's best for you, you know? And the web design thing, well... When I designed my first website, it was years and years ago, I was using like the platform GoDaddy and I despised it. I hated it so much. It was so difficult and frustrating and like infuriating for me. 
And so I just hated it. And then, like, when I made my next one, I had to hype myself up, and I still didn't enjoy it. In between there, I hired somebody to make a website for me, and she basically kind of, like, ghosted after the first year, and, like, I was locked out of my domain, so I couldn't have my initial domain anymore. So then I had to go back to making it by myself. And then there was like this switch where I started to figure out one of the platforms that I was using. And I was like, hmm, not so horrible anymore. I kind of understand it. And then back when I was working for Nest Family Photography, that company, it was time to make a website when we were starting out. And I suggested like, I think that I could do it. And so I did it and I enjoyed that process. And then as time went on, I just had to make other ones for Girl Babe. I had to make it for just other things. And then I realized, like, wow, I think I, like, really enjoy this now. It's so interesting because I really didn't like it, but now it's, like, so fun for me. Then, I guess previously to this, like, last December, I worked with Local Coco Aesthetics, who is an awesome as the esthetician here she does Botox lip fillers all of that kind of good stuff and she asked me like hey Krista do you do websites and at the time I had those that I was just talking about um done so I was like yeah I've done them but I haven't necessarily been hired directly for that but I do feel confident that I could make one for you that you would love and all of this stuff so I made her like a price list and everything and then we talked about it and I was just super upfront about like where I was in the journey. And so she was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely interested, but she didn't book for a while, which was totally okay. And then in the midst of all of this, she like reached out and she's like, okay, Krista, I'm ready. Like, I want to book you. And she told me that she has had other people offer to make it for her and everything but she's like I trust you I know you know what I like which is true I love her and I'm so grateful she trusted me and then she started this kind of cascading effect of it and like really showing me how much I enjoyed it so she took that kind of step with me and then I created her website and I like listened to everything that she would tell me and I just know her vibes like she's very like clean, simple, bougie kind of vibes and so I tried to create her website that way and she loved it and it was so fulfilling making it, it was so fulfilling showing it to her and seeing her just like light up and be stoked and she started referring me already off of that and then I just truly feel that because I am so passionate about it and love it so much and because I have awesome people referring me like her, it's like I was able to book so many websites so quickly. And each one, I feel like I'm learning more and like getting better and better. And I'm just so grateful. I've gotten to work with some established businesses and awesome boss babes that truly inspire me. Local Coco Aesthetics indulge spa who's like the sister company of jb salon um i've gotten to do for ocean creations which she was on the podcast as well hail who is another just successful badass bitch and i'm so thankful and i'm so lit up by this work and this is exactly what i was asking for when i was feeling so down and full of self-doubt for one thing, of course, the money, the bookings that are coming in so that I feel more secure, but also just getting to do something that just makes me not want to stop working, you know, like that I'm so passionate about and inspired in and all of these things. It's like, that's the life that I want to live. I want to live a life where I'm having so much fun because I love the work that I'm doing and I feel like it's making a difference, which I do feel like with this web design, I know it doesn't necessarily seem like that, but I feel like it is an empowering thing to female entrepreneurs to have a website that they're proud of and to feel good. And any entrepreneur, I have male clients as well, but you guys know that I focus a lot on my boss babes. But I just love it and I feel like that professional presence that the website creates helps with orders coming in with bookings coming in and all of that so I feel like I get to help people 
and live my purpose of empowering women. I get to be creative and have my mind working because every brand and company has like a different aesthetic and I want the website to really live up to each company's aesthetic and vibe, not necessarily just something that I think is pretty. Although, I think all of them are pretty, but, you know, I just get to be creative in such different ways, which has been so fun. Like, I would have never thought that I'd be doing web design years ago, but I swear, like, I always say this, but I feel like the universe, whenever I say never, it's like, oh, never? Well, yes, you are, and you're gonna like it. Like, with so many things in my life, and this thing included... And I feel like meditating every day just opens me up to it and it just encourages me all along the way whenever I'm feeling discouraged. It's like I start my morning with putting that out and letting the universe and my guides and angels like answer me and tell me this is why you should not be worried like specifically you know and you're fine, don't even worry, and to just be confident in what you're doing, you'll be able to figure anything out, and if you get stuck at any point, like, we're gonna help you, don't worry, so I'm just really stoked on this new chapter, and I think that that's one of the biggest ways that my life has changed because of the meditation practice, which I am here for. (laughs) Besides that, while all of this was going on, one of my cousin-in-laws messaged me on Instagram on one of my like posts about meditating and said, oh, I know this really good healer who does soul purpose readings, and I think you would love her, so let me know if you want, to make, want me to make the connection, and she like sent me her website. And I looked, and I checked it out, and it was like totally calling to me, like I was like, um yes sign me up like I booked that shit that morning as soon as I like looked into it and so if you guys are interested in that it's iloveintuition.com and my healer was Christina she's based out of Arizona but she does all of her readings over the phone and so she goes into like your Akashic records and she just tells you what how your energy flows through the most and how you can like use that to your benefit and she also tells you about your blockages and all of that so I have to get her permission but if I do get her permission then I'll put a little chunk of the recording of my reading in here all right Krista so first thing first is we're looking at your soul gift and there are eight different energy centers when I look at your Akashic and I look for what is the primary energy center that is your soul gift. And so you are a second energy center, which is divine creator. And Mm -hmm. you are at 48%, okay? Meaning 48% of your life force energy that flows through your body goes through this energy center. And then the rest of the percentages get divvied up amongst the other seven. And I don't look at those percentages, right? Because we're really just, we really want to know what the primary is. So practically half of your energy flow moves through this soul gift. And that's huge. Um, And so you're not trying to be 100%, right? You're not, it doesn't shift or change. It's just telling me and you, it tells me, okay, her primary energy center is the second because she has 48%. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just letting us know, like, okay, we've got about half of you flowing through this center, which is awesome. So, divine creator. Yay! I love my <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, you are all about somebody who really enjoys the physical place. Okay? So, building, creating, manifesting something that is tangible and real and lasting is the energy and the gift that you bring. So what you teach us and other people is about the value of the physical experience, okay? That is like you come here into this earth and it's like, everybody, look, we've got this whole playground. (laughs) of life 
And there's so many things we can create and do here. And like, let's do it. And people love that. Like, we have, and here's the thing. Each of the gifts are unique on their own. There's no gift that's better than the other, right? Sometimes we can have gift envy that starts to thing. <laughs> like, oh, I wish I was that gift. <laughs> but really, like, we are unique in our own gifts. And so you, who are someone that can, like, really embrace this for your experience, and then that gets other people really excited about being human. They get really excited about being a creator of their life. And that's really the, the essence is like you're able to take what it is that you desire, what it is that you want, and like create and manifest it. So this is also the realm of manifestation, right? This gift is the gift of manifestation, bringing things into physical form. And another aspect of this is that there is an embracing of money, sexuality, and the physical body. So oftentimes, second energy center divine creators, they really enjoy things about physical embodiment. Uh, so athletics, yoga, dance, tantra, traveling, just anything that has to do with the physical form or being with others as well. So, um, and then another thing is that you also enjoy creating things that stand the test of time. So whether that's actual, like, a building, being an, you know, being a creator, being an architect, uh, objects, brand. I have a lot of Second Energy Center people who are, like, brand builders or web designers, um, things like mm-hmm. that, photographers, uh, and also wealth. So many, this energy center as well is divine creator is like the energy of money too so wealth is something that is seen as a creative energy for this center and the more that you allow yourself to embrace money and have a healthy relationship with your finances the easier it is for you to really attract it and create it in your life because this is like your wheelhouse right so if So it's helpful if you find you're in the shadow side of that, right? And not even if you're in the shadow side. I think just in general, well, really for everybody, but specifically for second energy centers, like studying money, studying about finances, investing, building wealth, like really um, sort of opening yourself up, but just really learning a lot about that is really good for the energy center. It helps in your manifestation process. It helps in your ability to take what it is that you want to create and create it. Because really, for the second energy center, money is just a creative energy. It's just a tool for you guys. And so the more that you can see it that way, the more it allows you to engage in this physical human experience, because money is part of a physical human experience, then it allows you to really take that gift and just anchor it in so many more ways. So another thing is that you guys tend to love being with people and experiencing yourself in new environments, okay? Because new environments fuel you. And the having um, different kinds of experiences, like traveling, um, trying new things, just engaging the world, in new ways helps you stay in alignment. It helps you feel alive. It helps you feel like, wow, I'm really experiencing my physicality and my humanity and my creativity. Another element is abundance and success, like flows to you and through you by enjoying the physical experience, okay? So if you're ever feeling like, hmm, things aren't in the flow, right? If you're ever feeling stuck or ever feeling like, you know, you're not in the flow or maybe you don't even have an, you're trying to figure a situation out, you don't have an answer to it, move. <laughs> move your body, do something new, um, or put yourself in a new experience, right? Um, and like sort of engage in your enjoyment of being human. 
And that's going to get energy flowing for you. That's going to make you feel like, oh, I'm alive. My gift is flowing. Feeling good in life. <laughs> and then it's just like, boom, things will start opening up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that, let's see what else, creating businesses, like uh, the second energy center tend to be business. They like to have businesses because it's a creative energy for you guys. And then also that like, it, it creates that like sort of lasting legacy in that sense. So again, it's the energy of building, the energy of creation, physical ideas, like ideas into physical, tangible reality. All of that was super helpful. And she told me that I have three main blockages, which I wasn't sure exactly what they all were. But what she gave me was like this sheet of paper of like a kind of like an affirmation like statement of releasing those blocks and returning to like my original soul without all of those things hindering me. So I'm supposed to read that every day for 21 days and then that's supposed to be how long it takes for it to program into your subconscious so you have to do it every day. Side note, something freaking awesome about that too is that she reached out to schedule it and I wasn't even paying attention after I booked and I gave, I just picked like the first slot she had open because I was so excited and then when I woke up that day like looking forward to my reading and I wrote like daily meditation day and it was 50 and I felt like it was just so funny and cool and awesome. I felt like the universe was like giving me a gift of like yay you've made it this far and now we're gonna do this cool thing for you to grow and like get even better and just hear this from another perspective you know so I love that I thought that that was so neat and so aligned that it was on the 50th day that I got this reading that I wasn't even anticipating getting till like a few days before and that I just didn't even plan it that way so anywho, as I've been doing this 21 days of soul cleansing, that's like that affirmation sheet, I feel like the universe has been like bringing up all of the problems that I really like need and want to fix so that I can like address them and like get them out of the way. So another thing that has changed with all of it and that kind of came up through that is I realized that I... And I feel like a lot of girls can relate to this as well. And sometimes people are just like, yeah, that's just being a woman of like, with your romantic partner, it's like, you can just be so snappy and bitchy and mean for no reason. And it's like, you would never treat like a friend this way. But it's like, because it's your partner, you're just so impatient and you just like say mean things and it just like kind of comes out and you're like, I can't control it. But yes, girl, we can control it. And... I was doing that, and not that it was anything ridiculous, but I just didn't like that I was giving any sort of, sort of negativity toward my partner for like an uncalled reason, and I just felt bad, and my boyfriend was so awesome, and he'd let me off the hook all the time, but within myself, after I'd like say something like snappy or like mean, I'd be like, ugh, why did you say that? Like, no, don't do that. And also because just, it's just not right. So I wanted to change that as well. And I thought that it was pretty cool that she shared about the fact that if I read this paper out for 21 days, it'll get ingrained into my subconscious. So I'm like, that means that if I read anything out for 21 days, then that will get up ingrained in my self subconscious and that's something that I have been wanting to like fix for a while but it's just like one of those things it's kind of difficult especially if you girls can relate which I know some of you can because I've talked to some girlfriends about it and they know what I'm talking about and they're like oh I know I need to work on that too and so I decided okay I'm going to write out like my own kind of affirmation sheet of like fixing how I want to be as a person to my partner and I'm going to read that shit off for 21 days and get that ingrained in my subconscious. And so one of the things like the triggers of why I would like say something bitchy or be like mean was like my impatience and because 
my boyfriend, Tamatea, I love him so much. He is from Tahiti, and one of um, my girlfriends who is dating, one of his friends who's, like, another Tahitian boy, she's like, they move really slow, and I think it's because it's such a, like, slow-paced island life over there. So that's why I think that they're just so, like, taking their time with how they do everything. And I cracked up when I heard that because I think that it's totally true. And so that was, like, one of the things where I just get so impatient and, like, sis, for what? Like, no need and no need to say something mean. He's just, like, taking his time. So, for example, one of the things I wrote in my, like, new script of how, like, I want to be is I am so patient with my Tama. I admire how much he takes his time and enjoys doing every single task. Also, like, every time a mean or rude comment comes up, I pause and choose love instead. And as I practice this, these comments will cease to exist or come up in my mind. Like... Yes, girl, that's what I want. I don't want to just let the freaking mean comment come up and be like, oh, I can't help it. It just, like, came out. Like, no, bitch, you can't help it. Change yourself. Like, I think that it's such a thing that people will be like, that's just, like, how women are. But it does not have to be, I promise. And this is, like, something that I've been working on, right? And I truly feel like it's been working, too, which I'm stoked about, like, I'm not perfect by any means, and I'll never be perfect. None, nobody is, but I know that it's been getting substantially better, and that is all that we can ask for. Like, we just need to try our best to be better and be kind, and it's, like, just the fact of, like, lots of times the people closest to us will be the most, like, rude and snappy and mean to and not, like, think about what we're saying, whereas, like, these strangers are, like... Like, you would never just go up to a stranger and say something like that or, like, your girlfriend, you know? Like, you just don't do that. So why should we be doing that with people that are so close to us? It's just not right. So I just wanted to change that, and that's something that came with the meditating, too, of, like, really just being more self-aware in so many ways and being, like, I want to be my best self and my best, like, light self to others and everybody around and another awesome thing that came with just being more kind to my partner is our conversation and our time together is spent so much more enjoyably like our talks are so nice and true and I get to like listen to what he has to say and I'm like oh my goodness you're so funny you're so intelligent and you're cool as suck with the shit that you say like I'm so happy to be just like being still and listening to you because I love you it makes me love him even more like getting to truly listen to everything that he's saying to me and it's like just so awesome and I'm so happy that my relationship can just continue to grow and get better I had to go inward and fix that within myself and I hope that it's like not even a question or an effort anymore at some point which I trust it will be It'll just be natural to be so kind and everything. But yes, so that was something that I am continually working on and that I'm grateful to actually see changes because I was thinking too, like, I just can't help it. But I've proven to myself that I can help it and I've been helping it and you can continue to help it and stop doing that. So I am glad for that. Another cool thing that came with this is, you know how I was saying that I'll ask for, like, guidance throughout my day? I'll get guidance in so many cool ways throughout my day. So, some a couple examples are when I was deciding to make the move to basically quit my day job and pursue Chris Taylor full-time, I asked for a ladybug to show me that I was on the right path and that everything would work out and be abundant. So I got that sign when I needed it like last year and there was a ladybug on my window in the house which is kind of odd because I rarely see ladybugs in the house and even in general not too often so I loved it and I felt so guided and then as I started going on the web design thing like 
it was afternoon, I was making lunch, and I noticed that there was a ladybug on the window as I was making lunch, and I just took that as a sign and guidance that this is carrying you on that right path that we told you you would be successful. Now you're going in this other direction, and it's okay, and it's safe, and this is what you're meant to be doing right now, which I loved to hear that. And it just made me feel even more empowered and just lined up all of the messages that I'd been hearing. Also, in songs on the radio, lots of times, whatever thoughts are going in my mind, the, a song lyric will like pop out at me and that I'll just like focus in on for some weird reason. That's like literally exactly what I need to hear. Here's kind of like a little petty example, but I think it's kind of funny and true, and I've gotten it in deeper ways too. But okay, so this one morning, I had this important filming for Grow Babe with this company, Hawaiiverse, and I wanted to go to the store to grab something that I needed for the shoot. And so I had some time, but I just wanted to make sure that I got home and had everything ready in time. And so I was like, hardcore rushing to go run to the store and I'm like driving and like a thought passed over my mind like you shouldn't be rushing because whenever you rush that's when like things go awry because you're not like focusing on driving and doing what you need to do right and then that one Anuhea song that has those lyrics that are like take your time no need to rush that was a horrible interpretation of it I can't get the melody in my head but you guys know what I'm talking about came on and I'm like oh my goodness like so funny it just like really stuck out to me and I'm like okay sis just chill no need to be like trying so hard like be efficient but just no need to rush like exactly what it said and I like think that it's so fun to get guidance all throughout the day and just know that you're on the right path constantly because shoots man how are we supposed to know you know like that's how but before tuning into my intuition, it was like, there's like so high stakes with any decision or anything you're doing. It's like, am I doing the right thing? I don't know. There's no freaking guidebook. But our guides and our angels really want to help us and guide us and are going to give us little signs like that throughout our days and throughout writings and all of that stuff if we're just open to it and we just put in like our side of connecting with it and we just don't have to decide things on our own anymore or have to like worry because we're safe we're guided we don't need to know how we're gonna get to our dreams I know I always say this but it's hard a suck to follow even for me it's like we don't need to see the exact path we just need to keep listening to our guidance day by day and do what it says and try to execute those things that it's telling you and then soon you'll be like getting to that point where the doors will be opening to different things that are going to get you closer to your dreams and your goals and everything. And I just love that. And I think that it's so cool. And I'm so happy that I could finish this last recording of this first season with kind of sharing about this because it's been truly impacting my life to the max. And I hope that I can keep meditating every day forever. I'm kind of like addicted now because I love it. It just makes me feel so centered and full and confident to take on my day and just feel good knowing that I'm doing the right things and that everything is okay and that I'll be guided in a different direction if that's what I need to do. And I just love it. And I wanted to share this with you guys because... It's been so life-changing for me, and you know I want you guys all to succeed and thrive, so if I can share a little something that will help with that, then I always will. And so, yeah, I am thankful and grateful that this podcast came to exist, and I'm grateful that season one is wrapping up, and we got 10 episodes in the books. And I'm excited for the next season and to see how all of that kind of goes and what other guests we have that are awesome and inspiring and to hear their stories and hopefully to bring on other past guests as well and talk about how they've manifested some of the things that we might have talked about, which would be super cool. So yes, thank you guys so much for listening for all of this time and for listening to this episode and I hope you got something from it. 
and let me know what you guys think of solo episodes and if I should put some in to the next one or if you guys prefer episodes of guests. I feel like it's kind of interesting talking by myself and definitely less comfortable feeling, but I'm open to what you guys think, so please let me know. But yes, you can follow the podcast on at Abundant Feminine on Instagram. You can follow my web design and photography business and graphic design at chrystaylor.creative. I totally rebranded. Didn't mention that, but yeah, did that with all of that and changing things that I was doing from Chris Taylor Photography to Chris Taylor Creative to just include all of the new things too. And then the plant business, Grow Babe, it's at growbabe.high on Instagram. And on there, I'll talk about the markets I'm doing. And I also do online sales too, and we'll deliver the plant babies. So I hope to see you guys on any of those accounts. And thank you so much for being here with me today. I know that you could be listening to anything, but you chose to be here. And I truly, truly appreciate that. So enjoy the rest of your day and if you start doing more meditations I'd love to hear about it and I'd love to hear about any kind of manifestations that come to be for you or any kind of guidance or life changes that you're excited about and don't know who to tell like tell me because I would love to hear it have a beautiful beautiful day and I can't wait to come back and talk again bye bye